we are given three functions and our job is to find the domain of these three functions. We usually need to present the function by presenting the assignment and the domain and it's convention that if the domain is not specified we use what we call the natural domain which is the set of order numbers that can be meaningfully substituted into the expression. And meaningfully substituted means we don't get undefined, we, we get a number. For example, if we, if we put zero into this one, we're in trouble because we are going to take the square root of negative 35. That's undefined over the real numbers. So basically what we have to find is the natural domain of these functions. There is not that many ways we can get undefined. The three ways we can get undefined are division by zero, negative under a square root or fourth root or sixth root and, and so on, even root, and negative or zero in a logarithm. And that's it, that's a pretty short list, and these three problems illustrate those three cases. So first, let us just, just acknowledge that this thing factors as x minus 7 times x plus 5. There are all kinds of ways to get there, but this is not our topic today. Okay, for f of x, for f of x, we need to worry about division by 0. So that means that first, we're going to have to find all the numbers that make the denominator zero and then kick them out from the set of all real numbers. So we're going to solve for x squared minus 2x minus 35 equals to zero. And so we get 7 and negative 5. Therefore, the domain is the set of all real numbers except for 7 and negative 5. Okay. Now the second one and the third one are fundamentally different from this first one, but similar to each other. For the domain of square root of x squared minus 2x minus 35, instead of finding the troublemakers and kick them out, we're going to set up an inequality for what this expression will be only meaningfully defined if the number under the square root is, is non-negative, that is to say positive or zero. So basically we have to solve this quadratic inequality. If we graph y equals x minus 7 times x plus 5, we know that uh, this is an upward opening parabola with x intercepts at negative 5 and 7, something like this. And on this graph, for every x, the y coordinate is exactly this. So we're looking for the so we're looking for the x values. So on this graph, the y coordinate is the expression that is uh, the left-hand side of our inequality. So the question is, for what, if you look here, the question for what values of x will, will this be non-negative is the same as to ask, for what values of x will the points on the parabola be above or on the x-axis? And that set is, x is either less than or equal to negative 5, or, or x is greater than or equal to 7, the same solution set in interval notation is from negative infinity till negative 5, closed at 5, union, closed at 7, 7 to infinity. So that is our solution set. That is the domain of this function. So <coughs> the third one is very, very similar to the, to the previous one. The only difference is that logarithms are a little bit touchier than square roots. They don't even handle zero. So now we write the quadratic inequality, almost identical to the previous one, but now the inequality is strict. We are not allowing this thing to be equal to zero, which means we are going to look at the same graph with the same x-intercepts, only the endpoints are not included. So now the solution set of, uh, of this inequality, which is the same as the domain, is x is either strictly less than negative 5 or x is strictly less than negative 5 or greater than 7. And the same solution set in interval notation is the union of two open intervals from negative infinity to negative 5 and from 7 to infinity. By the way, if we go back to the first one, the solution set is almost every real number. We just lose two points, which in interval notation, that's a little weird. We're going to have to go from negative infinity to negative 5, then from negative 5 to 7, and then from 7 to infinity. So there are three pieces. But visually, it looks like almost the entire real number line, we only lost two points. But for the second one and the third one, we lost, we lost a good chunk of the real numbers. So for the square root that allows zero, the solution, the domain of the function looks like this. 
so we lost this little line segment in the middle and the domain of the third one is almost the same as the second one right thank you for watching <laughs>